Good morning, everyone, and thanks for having us. My name is Katrin Seiler. I'm the Open Access Librarian at Friedrich Alexander University in Erlangen, and I want to give you some insight into our activities on the OA switchboard in collaboration with JMIR. And I'll focus on one aspect, which is checking funding eligibility of a specific paper via locally managed open access funds. There's other potential uses of the switchboard, like reporting and collaborations with funders, but I'll go ahead and give you the lowdown on eligibility checking, and then I have a treat for you, which is a tiny interview with one of our authors. So you get a European perspective on our challenges inherent in open access funding and the communication it entails, both by a librarian and a researcher. At FAU, we've got uh, a range of publishing deals, which we need because we're among the top 10 uh, most research-intensive institutions in Germany. And we've got two locally managed open access funds, which you can see on the left, uh, which we use to pay for APCs. Uh, fund number one is courtesy of a government support program for open access run by the DFG, which is the German Research Foundation and our principal government funder. And this is reserved for publications that came out of DFG-backed research projects, and the other one, the FAU fund or house fund, if you will, is for everybody else. And uh, both of these share some criteria but vary in others. Um, some of these criteria are informed by the DFG, um, some are our own. One has a cap on how high an APC can be and the other one doesn't. So in itself that doesn't sound too complicated, but the devil is in the application of the criteria. As you'll hear shortly, figuring out whether a specific paper is fundable isn't straightforward at the minute. The process kind of looks like this, so there's a lot of back and forth and waiting between emails until we can establish eligibility for the respective fund and under which conditions. And if you consider that funding criteria vary from place to place, but even in-house and that more funding options are being added over time, you can appreciate that it's a source of complexity for authors and publishers alike and that we need solutions to streamline this process. What is happening now is that I can use the switchboard um, to turn these general eligibility criteria into concrete, actionable information for publishers through standardized messaging. So based on the article level metadata that I receive from the publisher through the switchboard, I can make a decision and even partially automate that decision and then communicate this back to the publisher with a standardized response. So they have a precise answer to the question that they want answered, which is, is this paper fun? and how. And this is coming from the best source of this information, which is the librarian at the institution. And this didn't just come naturally. We had to collaborate on getting the switchboard there, but the collaboration in itself has made our needs and modus operandi much more transparent to each other than I think it's been before. Um, and now we're having an actual conversation about open access funding scenarios, both alongside and through the open access switchboard. Hi everyone, we're at the um, Department of Machine Learning at FAU with one of our junior researchers, Michael Nielsen. Um, Michael has kindly agreed to give us an overview of his experience uh, with open access publishing here at FAU. Um, you are doing a PhD there in uh, AI in medicine. <laughs> okay, and uh, you recently had a paper published with JMIR, which is your third paper. And JMIR is our trial body of the Open Access Switchboard. So, do you want to just tell us something about your experience with Open Access so far? So, overall, I thought the, the experience and especially the public, uh, publishing process in, in the Open Access Journal that I have so far published in um, fairly fast overall. Um, the review overall was surprisingly strict. I would have expected it not necessarily to be that strict, but it overall worked out. The reviewers gave great feedback overall. I had the feeling that initially there was some trouble finding reviewers, um, probably time-wise, which may be due to the, or the sheer amount of papers that some of these um, journals actually receive. That might, might was one interesting experience to see and actually to see how many different reviewers or well, decline the review are actually needed to, to review a paper and how many people need to be initially approached. That was something that was um, interesting for me to see. I think one point that could be difficult for some other authors, or for some authors, um, could be the publishing fees that are sometimes fairly hefty. So, um, especially if there are no grants or only limited granting available, or there are certain thresholds which have to be met with respect to article publishing fees, 
Um, I believe that might sometimes be a problem within some domains. So, uh, would you like to describe your experience um, regarding the communication with your publisher and with the institution specifically about open access issues? Absolutely. So, after submission, during the review process, the communication with the um, both with the journal but also with our local university and the support from our university was overall great. So, this was a fairly smooth process. The review was within the time frame that we expected. For another paper that we recently submitted and which is currently still stuck in the review process since about three months nonetheless, um, we had the problem that it was not funded by any specific project. There was no certain certain grant available for it. So for once we had to search quite some time for an applicable grant in one place. And then there was a certain maximum ABC threshold that, has to, uh, that had to be met. And during these discussions with the publisher, it was, um, the replies sometimes took longer. We had to ask several times whether this discount was possible. And this was somewhat, somewhat, somewhat bothersome to us as authors because we just have to deal with the respective administrative issues. We always have to send emails to make sure that, um, that your paper is applicable. And, uh, yeah, this is something that was, that was less optimal than the actual process itself. Um, we have overall great support by our institutions and there are also um, great and many funding schemes available for different types of paper, for different types of research always also depending on, on who is um, supplying the respective funds. However, um, it's sometimes, well, with, with additional funds and new funds and new grants becoming available, it's sometimes complex to actually figure out which fund is applicable, which fund is not applicable, whether there's a certain threshold, whether there is a hybrid open access option supported, whether it's fully open access, what all of these individual options actually are, because they are apparently also sometimes differ from journal to journal. So this, this is something that is fairly complex, uh, that actually also takes up some time from us as researchers. Going forward, uh, what are your expectations and hopes for open access publishing for you as a junior researcher? So overall, I think open access publishing in general is a great idea, or just a, just a great means to actually publish knowledge, publish knowledge not only with research, the, uh, the fellow research community, but also with people outside of research, just because they can, for example, find these articles via search engines and just online as they would have read news articles, which is, I guess, especially important in today's times with fake news and so on and so forth, um, where one just has to be a little bit more cautious about what he or she finds online. I think that's for one, one great aspect, one great potential of, of open access. For us researchers, I think it's important to actually kind of streamline the overall process. So we kind of want to generate knowledge, we want to share this knowledge with the world. Ideally, I try to reduce any administrative tasks, for example, though, as much as I possibly can. So, for example, it would be great if we no longer have to deal with um, figuring out different article processing fees, figuring out which article can be published where, figuring out different, different funding criteria, and so on and so forth. This was something that would be moved away from authors and just kind of happen by magic, so to speak. And um, kind of sticking to, this, sticking to this point, I think it's also important to actually streamline the process to make sure that open access publishing remains um, some, somewhat worthwhile and also it doesn't become more expensive or too expensive. Not only for us here at this university, but also for, for other projects that have less funding opportunities, that have less funding possibilities, but also of course to, for example, the taxpayer who funds many of these projects, who needs to get value for the money that, that the taxpayer by the end of the day pays. You'll be delighted to hear that the Open Access Switchboard um, will be hopefully part of an infrastructure that will alleviate these kinds of administrative burdens on you so it doesn't cut into your research time um, and to also make your funding streams uh, more visible between institutions, publishers um, and the government funders like the General Research, Research Foundation which is waiting for them to join really um, so we can accelerate this. Um, and really collaborate with them um, on the open access funding. Sounds great. Perfect, thank you. Um, and back to Chicago. Bye.